Hey guys, it is a very, very special edition of the Indie Mayhem Show, live from Pittsburgh, PA, but this time from uh, the wonderful Chair Shot Reality set here at Point Park University. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Of course, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I'm not going to give this spiel because we've got something really important to get to today. I got uh, two. I got the two Justins with me today. Uh, both are going to be involved with the upcoming. No, no, first off, you're wrong already. It should always be this way, but you will refer to me as Mr. Labar or El Capitan because I'm the captain of Team Labar. See, you can't you're even in, no, you, you can't, can't even introduce us without him trying to hog this spotlight. You're in my place of work. You're in my place of work. I let you come in. Because this is the only place you would do this. I didn't want to drive an hour down here. I mean, you got a nice place, but this is the only place we do this. I don't care what you want. It's you always want, about so bad. If you so bad, right, we right, want right, to do right, this. Let's, let's talk about House of Hardcore. Let's business first, of course. Let's talk about it. I'm a lot busier than you are. First of all, you're busy ruining the company. Justin Plummer, the 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 owner of International Wrestling Cartel, been the owner for nearing about two years now. Uh, you guys are partnering with House of Hardcore coming to the Pittsburgh area for the very first time coming here on our tour, their, their, their 20th show here. Yep. Uh, how important is this for, for, for Pittsburgh, for indie wrestling, that these guys are showing up here? Uh, it's, it's huge. I mean, this is incredibly exciting. October 15th, and, and just so we can let everybody know, tickets still on sale, iwcwrestling.com or houseofhardcore.net. Um, it's not a secret that Tommy Dreamer has become a big part of IWC ever since I took over. And I've been fortunate enough At my to, expense, by the way, because he hit me with a prosthetic leg, which yeah. there's still litigation for. You got in the ring. That was a pretty good one. You moment. got in the that ring. Was... That's what happens. But, but one of the benefits of that relationship and, and the way we got along is him trusting IWC to bring his product. And he said if the Penguins won the Stanley Cup, he was going to bring House of Hardcore <laughs> to Pittsburgh. So October 15th, they're coming here, and it's going to be, it's going to be huge because it's a rematch that's, that's 20 events in the making. It's going to be Rhino, the current WWE Tag Team Champion, it's going to be his final match on the independent scene. Former before. Team LeBar member, by the way. Right, yeah. Hopefully hopefully he's reformed since then. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. I, I knew you'd bring that up. Uh, his, last, his last match for returning to WWE full-time, uh, he's going to be facing Sammy Callahan, former Super Indie Champion, which is huge. Of course, Tommy Dreamer's going to be at the event in action. We're going to have EC3, Hornswoggle, even Hardcore Holly, a blast nice. from the past. You can't have House of Hardcore without Hardcore Holly. Uh, so That's many more, clever. and uh, you know, House of Hardcore is known for surprises, and uh, I've gotten a few hints. I haven't heard anything yet from Tommy, but I know he's got some surprises up his sleeve. So you're gonna have to be there October 15th to see exactly what those surprises are. Uh, Mr. Labar, uh, so so how is important is it uh, being a part of this for yourself? And of course, uh, Team Labar is gonna be representing there as well. What? what? That's your first question to me. That's where we go. Are you Lester Holt? Listen here. All we have to know is that Team Labar. So this is a big. This is a big deal. All right. This is a big show. House of Hardcore. Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hardcore. He's hardcore. It's coming to Pittsburgh. It's a big deal. So if anything big is happening in pro wrestling, naturally the name Labar is attached to it. WWE comes to town. Where, where, where's Labar? Team Labar. We're kissing babies, doing charity. We're sitting ringside at, at, at Console Energy Center, interviewing the stars. So if House of Hardcore is coming to Pittsburgh on October 15th, then it's natural that Team Labar would be involved in it. That's, that, I, there's no real in-depth question of like, how, like, that's like a stupid question. It's obvious. What, that, next okay, question, okay, please. Okay, we'll move on, move on. Obviously, we have Team Labar, Team Plumber going head-to-head -head here. You guys team have, IWC. Team I'm, IWC. I'm not egotistical enough to name my team after myself. It's because your name's not worth anything. Well, I, You're a disgrace to guys with the name Justin, by the way. Well, either way, you guys You're have had an issue ever since uh, uh, Palmer took over the, the, the promotion. Uh, what's the deal here? Why, why are you guys going head to head here? Well, I mean, I think it's clear the way people, they, they've seen how he's acted over the years. Why it started, I have no idea. Chuck Roberts brought him in to do, to do uh, live chair shot reality. That's all he was supposed to do. A few fans chanted my name because I think they would have rather seen me in there. No big deal. It wasn't the end of the world. I think it was a little bit of jealousy, honestly, at that point. Um, and, and I don't know what, I don't know how it's grown I'll to what tell you, it is I'll, now, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I did not get along at all with Chuck Roberts. I, he and I didn't see eye to eye, but, and I don't see eye to eye with you, but there's a difference. I respected Chuck Roberts just a little bit. I don't respect you. My problem is, is that you, you have, you have, you have slithered your way in like a little snake to one of the most historic, <laughs> long-running, longest-running independent wrestling companies in, in the world, in this country. You slither your way in from what? What were you? You were, you were a goofy, ki goofy kid wearing a vest, chasing guys down for the, for the post-show, and then all of a sudden, I, I, I turn around, I go, on one, I go on one Caribbean vacation, I turn around, I come back, and you're the new boss? You so I, I don't lay, I don't lay down for anybody. So it's, 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 it's encouraged me, and I've worked. By the way, it is, it is, it is, 
thrusted me in with great motivation to make sure that I make my name and Team Lamar as big as possible to stick it to you. And you better watch your back. You think you, two ha minutes you think you have such a, a, a good clan around you. You think you have such a good support system that, that you can trust everybody. I would beware because I hear things, I know things, I have sources. I would beware right, who you trust and who you say things to because it might come back to bite you. You talk about surprises at House of Hardcore. No, I talked to Tom, you dream and we got surprises. You have no idea what I'm capable of well, surprises. Well, let's talk about who, who's got surround. You guys, you guys have got your team lined up. Who you got picked for team lined up? Team IWC is stacked. It really is. I mean, we got our, we got three of the best superstars in all of professional wrestling today. IWC's number one man, my number one guy, Andrew Palace, who is a huge up and comer. This guy, this kid's going places. I think you're going to see exactly why. I'm excited to get him in front of a, a large crowd such as House of Hardcore. And I think Labar, you know what Andrew Palace can do because it won't be your first encounter. Uh, we have John McChesney, who is probably. The, the biggest star, the most important superstar in IWC history. Do you have uh, John McChesney? We do have John McChesney, actually. See, it goes back to the thing of I know all, I hear all, uh, I have sources. I, I have it on pretty right. good, I have pretty good sources and pretty good authority that uh, He's fine. John McChesney's not going to be able to wrestle. He's fine. He, he tore his calf two months ago. He wasn't able to wrestle the last few events. I just talked to him two nights ago. He's not cleared to wrestle yet. He will be cleared to wrestle at House of Hardcore. You could cut the guy's that's leg real, off, Labar. That's real great. That's real great. You think that? I mean, I really, after what I, you did I, to I, him, I'd say I really hope he doesn't slip and fall. He'll be something. he'll be fine after what you did to him and what you put him through for a year. He will be there. You'll have to cut his leg off. He'll hop down to the ring on one leg to get his hands on your team. And and Labar, what, what he's going to talk about his secret weapon, more of a guy he's leeching on because he knows he's destined for success. A guy he's manipulating. So so Labar can take the credit once this guy once this guy takes it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Wardlow, but you got this monster Wardlow on Labar's side, but we got Jimmy Vegas, who's a little bit bigger, a little bit badder, a little bit more violent, and I think from all aspects in this six-man tag, Please. we got you guys outnumbered. Please. Uh, I've heard Jimmy, more. Jimmy, I've, Jimmy Vegas was violent when it was black and white TV. I've oh. heard more fans afraid of. Uh, I've heard more fans afraid of uh, Jimmy Vegas uh, than uh, Wardlow. I got if, a point there. Uh, uh, once again, you are. All I can say to, to an old Jim is your best bet is not to show up, okay? But your best bet is not to oh, show up Jim. because Wardlow is stronger than you ever were, he's <laughs> faster than you ever were, he's half your age, he's twice as hot, and he has my management. Well, other than Wardlow, what do you got on your side? I have Wardlow, which I, I, him himself can, can probably destroy the entire uh, Team IWC, but just for great fun and great, and we always have great entertainment, Mr. Entertainment, RJ City, he is returning to IWC. We're going we're gonna to have a nice... Uh, barbershop quartet singing our way to the ring, and then we have a nice barbershop quartet singing our way out of the ring. And as we're singing out of the ring, we'll be twerking with the Justin Bieber of professional wrestling, another one of my Team LaBar clients, the wonderful Dylan Bostic. It shouldn't even be with the beautiful Ray Lynn uh, by his side. Who lost his his IWC career just a month ago? So the fact that you it found was a loophole and brought him back is whatever. If you want to, I got better lawyers line, that's than fine. you do. Well, you that's guys, fine. you guys have been heated for a while here. Obviously, here trying to separate you guys. I mean, you know, you're, uh, I'm charging you in overtime. This what? Uh, you know, I, I mean, what's on the line here Longer other than, than pride? What, what's on the line here other than pride for you guys? I don't know what. I, well, look, the, pride. We're, yeah. Nothing's going to hurt my pride here. I already know what the outcome is. I'm a Nostradamus. I know exactly how this is going to end. That's that's actually a really great question. You're 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 trying to steal off our limelight being in there. Steal off what's, your limelight. The number one leech. This is such a big wrestling. match. Are you kidding me? Put put something up, my friend. Put what? What do you want? I'll, I'll put anything up. You name it. I'll oh, put, you it up. put your wife care. up. What do you want to put up? Put my. Okay, I'll tell you. That's another thing. You bring. I, what do you? Well, go ahead. Put something up. What do you? What do you want to do? Well, you, you gonna shave that ridiculous beard? You look stupid, by the way. Thanks. How, how about you this? want a playoff run? How about I didn't this? know you joined the Penguins. I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a deal with all of your goons and the, these cronies that you have that you're that you're leeching off their success uh, or their hopeful success. How about this? Team IWC wins. We got winner takes all coming up on December 10th. DJZ, current TNA X Division champion, current IWC heavyweight champion. If my team wins, I pick his opponent for that event. And all your guys can stay home. But if you win, I'll allow you to pick DJZ's opponent. How about that? Is that enough on the line for you? Huh? If you got the balls to do it, I'm all for it. All right. It's a deal. I'd shake your hand if I wasn't afraid to touch you, but that's... Well, that sounds great. Well, uh, I wouldn't shake your hand. I'm not afraid of anything. Of House of Hardcore are. here in Pittsburgh on October... 15th. Check out IWCWrestling.com for tickets too, still available. Right. Thank you, Justin Labar, for having us here. Justin Plummer for coming down here, as always. And uh, we're going to head back to the studio and have a conversation with Eamon about some indie wrestling. A jerk. He's a jerk. Indie Mayhem Show, uh, talking some indie wrestling now. Uh, thanks for joining us and checking out that interview there. But with us in the studio, Britt Baker, hanging out. Hi. 
Hey. Just happens to be here. <laughs> uh, and you had a topic, any wrestling topic you wanted to talk about a little bit. Yeah. So um, just kind of hot in the in the wrestling news right now, sort of the UFC fighters turned pro wrestlers type mm-hmm. deal. Because uh, and just to, the two that pop to my head right now, Matt Riddle and Shayna Baszler, both who are phenomenal pro wrestlers and also really good, re- like they can fight for real. And I just think... I don't know. It's just so interesting to me. It's like how you you are trained originally to fight and punch and kick for real and how to kind of tone that down and to, to work safe. Well, is it not that we've had that a little bit for a while because, of course, you know, uh, uh, amateur wrestlers. Right. Like come over and not so much a striking thing, I guess. Right. right? But still like a little bit of an adaptation. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I actually have a nephew that's going from uh, amateur wrestling to judo. Uh, and, and he says his biggest thing is like. Uh, uh, whenever he gets his shoulders down, he because instinctively he's been trained to have to like, well, I get off my shoulders, right? right. So, and again, I, I and I'm, of course, all that translates in different ways to to, to pro wrestling. Um, so, so, so these these ones are the, they're actively both UFC and pro wrestling right now that you're mentioning. So Matt Riddle, no, mm-hmm. I actually don't. I and I don't follow UFC at all. So mm-hmm. I, it's like I don't. I mean, I know. I know like the four horsewomen. I know Ronda Rousey. I know like stuff like that. But I so as, as far as like the moves and everything, I don't even. I don't. I'm so like that's such a foreign world to me. UFC because I, I don't. I never really followed it. But all I know is like people are tapping out because their bones are breaking and in UFC fights and mm-hmm. they're bleeding and have black eyes and bloody faces. Whereas that's not as common in pro wrestling. So. I, I just and I, I, t- I talk to people I have this conversation all the time it's like how do you go from fighting for real when having that just I feel like that led to a point that's like instinctive to being like I'm, I'm gonna have a safe but entertaining pro wrestling match and not send my opponent off in a body bag I feel like that's something that happens like Bobby Fish was a guy that mm-hmm. did that like he did both MMA and pro wrestling in Japan yep which is probably the toughest place to do both things um so i mean there, there, there's a lot of that the brock is now kind of doing it yeah <laughs> right i guess i don't know i kind of CM looks, punk went the other way cm punk went the other way uh, well they had to not work out one of these times right, right. uh so um I, I mean we've had ken shamrock you know right. uh, you know dan severn oh dan he was a jt like yeah was at, at, yep in aiw we love him um and uh uh oh who's it blackman Steve Blackman, like right. he's more martial arts guy, but yeah, certainly. I I, I think I guess it, it's not, it just now that the whole women's aspect it kind of hits more home to me because right. it's just so. I mean, she she, she is not someone I would want to piss off. That's for sure. There was a girl on NXT when they did like that six women tag right around the last takeover. Daria, Daria, Daria. Yeah, she was. So she was at my tryout in September. I know her. Okay, she's um. Yeah, she's she's a UFC fighter too, and that's her. Her thing is what put your hair up and square up, and she she's another like she fights for real. And mm-hmm. like me, so me as as an opponent to someone like that, I'm thinking if if I accidentally get like a stiff super kick in, I'm running because they're coming at me for real. Like you know, you mm-hmm. can't but think like you don't want to piss them off because they know how to put they know how to make you tap for real. And right. it's like, right. so it's like, oh, but I mean, I'm, you know, they're all, we're all safe. We're all trained, but at the same time, like they know things that I don't. And I think something like WWE is definitely attracted to that mm-hmm. these days. We're like, I mean, what have we had over the years? Like they're taking people from all different football players and, uh, geez, big show was a basketball player, I guess. Uh, uh, you know, uh, amateur wrestling, NCAA champions. And, and I think this is just as UFC has grown, Right. I think it, it it pretty much just kind of falls into place, right? Right. I apparently because mm-hmm. here we are. So what's <laughs> gonna? What do you think is gonna be the next the next realm that's gonna cross over to? We have football players, UFC. What's coming in next? Where's our soccer players? I mean, since uh, there's so many Pele kicks now with AJ Styles in WWE. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, well, and even um, isn't Noe Jose? I think he like legit was a was a baseball player. I, I love him. First yeah. off. That's one. He's one of my favorite like characters in NXT right now. Absolutely love him. But I I don't know what he that. I mean I would believe that. But his the dancing when as soon as his music comes on I I I start dancing too. I love it. I think that's a genius. And he's great because he doesn't um 
He's, he doesn't seem like he's pigeonholed like Adam Rose was. Right, because it's like his he does the thing where he like snaps and then he's like this big, this mean, scary fighter where it's like that's believable. Like he could be, he could have the title because he could, he gets so crazy and mean that he's going to mess someone up. It's not just like a cartoony thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah, you, and so you were up there for the Bloodsport show, right? That right. was those very, it was very, you know, kind of, you know, MMA inspired, I guess, right? Absolutely, because you know I wrestle my match and come down in the locker room, and there's Ronda Rousey just mm-hmm. stroll like strolling, and Jasmine Duke. We we were just missing one of the four horsewomen, so I stood in for her, you know, for the night. No, I'm mm-hmm. just kidding. Um, but it that it's just so surreal because they said I forget who said I think maybe Biggin said it. There's two people, or I can't remember who said two people in this world you need to meet, and that's Oprah and Ronda Rousey. So I'm halfway there. I just got to get Oprah. No, Oprah I'm, or Super Oprah? No, Oprah. I'm the Super Oprah thing. I love though too. I love that. <laughs> that's hilarious. I want to tag with Super Oprah someday. That's hilarious. But um, anyway, no, she. So Ron, Ron was so cool. She was just like watching the matches. She was so pumped when she won the title. Um, and she's in the back like. Can we like show me how to do this? Show me how to do that. And all the guys were like showing her stuff. It was it was really cool because she was very down to earth and just very she was talking to everybody, asking questions, and we're all like low key starstruck, like, oh my god, that's Ronda Rousey. It, that's an interesting thing that happens a lot. And and I love seeing this now between, you know, what we saw at AIW there and PWG, you have, you know, uh Oh, I can't remember her name. Sofia Vergara in the front row of, of Pro Wrestling Gorilla, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, other people popping up like that, or other people that pop up in Lucha Underground. That- well, at, at that that Bloodsport show, it was there. It was like weird because she was there. Um, Mick Foley's daughter. What? what? Noel. Noel Foley yeah. and Frank the Clown were there. Yeah. Um, after the show, uh, Tyson Kidd is just there just to say hi. Yeah, and it was just so weird. I was like, "What is going on here tonight?" But that's that's indie wrestling. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was that was a really fun show, fun weekend. To be in a spot where you guys can both just equally be a star truck, starstruck with each other, like between like the the the, the stars coming. It's it's always been like football players always come yeah. in the raw, uh, basketball players always come in the raw. They're excited to meet whoever, and they're like, "You're so and so," and you're excited to see you know me, the wrestler, you know, and you go. Know, uh, kind of thing. It's it's been an interesting. That's an interesting. I don't know. There's an interesting uh, uh, dichotomy that goes on there. I agree. Um, the, the Cleveland Browns. There was the football players at the last AW show, and of course they had something to say about the Britsburg, <laughs> the Britsburg <laughs> gimmick. But I said, hey, we'll see you what November. <laughs> but no, awesome. it, it is cool. That it's just I don't know. Right. Everyone has some sort of interest in pro wrestling. If they don't, I think they're lying. Like it's cool. <laughs> all right a little bonus uh a little bonus uh, uh conversation we had with Britt there in the studio earlier today and uh, yeah things were kind of tense there with plumber and labar mr labar as he says i need to call him but anyways thanks for them for uh, uh thanks for to uh, uh chair shot reality and just labar for uh let us do that interview in their uh studio uh down there at point park university but uh, i finally hey i found i found our friend i found our friend of the show I found our co-host of the show. <laughs> he is in Texas. He is Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, and apparently the voice of a few other places lately from the sounds of it, too. I'm here. I'm actually You're here. here. Okay. You're everywhere, man. That's great. I'm trying. I'm trying. Look at that. You're getting out. You're getting everywhere. I, I, you know, I was just, I was just uh, poking some certain promoters up here that if uh, they ever book anybody from Texas to make sure uh, you tag along with them. Uh, yeah, give, so, me the car, give me a carload. It'll work out. Yeah, get you in the carload. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing? I understand that you had a show this weekend. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, uh, I had Inspire as always this past uh, this past Sunday. I got to this is my first, I guess, double weekend of, of shows because I also got to ring announce for um, main event pro wrestling out of uh, Longview. Uh, great company, uh, really great guys. I want to give them credit as well. Uh, they had about. Uh, from what I heard from the tally, about 800 people wow. uh, packed this packed this high school gymnasium uh, in in a, in a really small town of Texas. Um, I, I would I think it's safe to say, like just looking out into that crowd, uh, half of them were kids, which was weird, um, but cool because they really were excited about everything that was happening. Um, 
yeah, it was a really fun show, and it was really great to uh, to get to work for them. Uh, uh, they're really great guys, and I hope like, to get to do some more work for them soon. Uh, but yeah, Sunday, uh, we had Inspire Pro Wrestling, our Fade to Black 2 event. Uh, this was a, I, I, a lot of people were saying it and, and, and I would come to agree. I think this is our best overall show we've done yet. Top to bottom. Uh, this was definitely a very, um, uh, I wouldn't say taxing, but, uh, it had, it's, it had, it was definitely going to be our most difficult show going in. Uh, we had 10 matches, uh, uh it, a lot of storyline based stuff, a lot of, um, uh, big angles that we wanted to get off and 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 and, and execute, uh, and luckily we were able to do that, and it was a very very good show, um, uh, especially when we were going against a WWE pay per view that we didn't expect when we got the date, um, <laughs> and we were also going against really terrible weather in Austin. Uh, there was flooding throughout the city, and we still were able to pack the place, which was a good feeling. So because it was um, the only dry place in Austin, it really worked out well for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 we were worried a bit in the beginning because usually it, things usually fill up pretty quickly, but it was more of a trickling process over time. But we eventually did fill the place, so which is which is a good feeling. Um, but yeah, it was it was awesome. Uh, a lot of really great matches, uh, all of which you can pick up very soon on uh, Smart Mark Video at smvod.com. Um, Do, a lot uh, of cool stuff. It was I, great to see. Um, can I ask? Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Can I ask something? Oh, yes, oh, right. oh wait! Is this your? What is, is the P- Pure Prestige Championship yours? Like the Inspire Pro Championship yes, or something? Yes, that is the uh, that is the championship currently held by Keith Lee. Right. Which is. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I'm just saying. I I just pulled up the video here for our our, our friends on, on on the video feed, and uh, that belt is huge. It is very big. Like Keith is not uh, a small it's... guy, and that that belt is huge. No, it is not. Uh, it, he he's a very big individual. Um. Uh, and and yeah, it, it it's it's probably one of the bigger belts I think you'll find on the independents. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's one of my favorite belts. And now, um, based off of Keith's victory over Inspire Pro Champion Ricky Starks uh, at the event's main event, uh, he is now the top champion. And I don't think there's ever been a case where in in any of wrestling where a championship belt that's considered mid card or, or under underneath a heavyweight title has has usurped it in a way, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very cool that we got to do that. Uh, and, and Keith Lee is now the top champion in Inspire Pro Wrestling, which is very cool. Wow. Uh, lots of really great matches across the board. It was very great getting to see and talk to uh, Jade again, a.k.a. Mia Yim. Uh, uh, she had a great match with uh, uh, Jessica James, our XX Division champion, who uh, many people may have saw uh, part- is participating in this week's uh, uh, WWE Performance Center tryouts uh, off of their website. Um, so, uh, good luck to her on that as well. Um, very, very cool stuff, uh, across the board. Uh, and, and it builds to, uh, another big, ma- uh, another big show that we have coming up next month, uh, uh, Saturday, October 29th. It's the rare time we do a Saturday show. Uh, so for those people that keep tweeting us saying, why, why don't you do Saturday shows? We're doing one October 29th and you better be there. Uh, and it's the battle <laughs> war show. So this is. I, I said it on Twitter, and I love saying it. It is my wrestling Christmas uh, because that's the show we do uh, alongside some of the people at Chikara Pro Wrestling. Um, it's one of my favorite shows of the year because uh, I get to be surrounded with some of my favorite people of the year. Um, and, yeah, I'm very, very excited to uh, see what we put forward. We already have begun announcing matches uh, on our social media for that show. Uh, uh, there's more to come uh, uh, in the coming days. Very excited as to what uh, uh, we're bringing for Battle Wars 1999, uh, which is my which is my favorite title for a show and my favorite artwork for a show, by the way, um, that we've done. So yeah, that's going to be really exciting, and that's uh, October 29th, that's awesome. and tickets are already on sale at InspireProWrestling.com. So 1999. Does that mean there's going to be a 1999 theme to this? Like possibly like, like is there uh, there's a lot of ways there's a lot of ways you can interpret it uh the cover art for for this event uh, you know, uh if you see the poster is very uh, uh very much a take on escape from new york mm-hmm. uh the movie uh and and uh you know this is our third year doing battle wars so as opposed to 1997 this is 1999 if that makes sense um <laughs> so there's a lot of ways you can interpret it um also, that whole you know the old time phrase "party like it's 1999," you know, I this hope, is probably one of our bigger you know shows in that sense. So I um, hope this means somebody. A, a I hope it. this means somebody's coming out to Millennium. 
Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, uh, all right. So <laughs> from there, I, I wanted to, to, to kind of talk about, um, um, because you brought it up here momentarily, and I noticed you already. I, I posted the, the picture from the Performance Center over in the Wrestling Mayhem Shows uh, 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 page because uh, it looks like you guys already did a head start of uh, Spot the Indie Wrestler at the Performance Center this past yes, week. Um, and of course, like, we were talking a little bit with Britt in the interview that should be uh, uh, popping up uh, next week um, about, you know, uh, momentarily about she, she she's done one of these tryouts as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it's awesome to see these. It's awesome to see the faces pop up, you know, as we have. I mean, we have in the past saying, "Oh, well, yeah, you know, Asylum's in there. Hey, Brett Baker's in there," you know, in in, in past past ones. Uh, uh, tell us about it because you 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 kind of uh, uh, point out a couple of them, but tell us about uh, 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 some of the familiar faces you're seeing in this crowd. Well, definitely, I, I mentioned uh, Inspire Pro Zone. Jessica James uh, is one of the participants. A lot of great female talents uh, uh, on that list. Uh, the likes of a. Uh, uh, Kimberly uh, and, and, and Heidi Lovelace, both from Chikara Pro fame. Um, uh, Nicole Savoy uh, is another really great talent um, uh, that's in there. Uh, Shayna Basler, who uh, is the current AIW Women's Champion, who's also a member of the uh, original Four Horsewomen from MMA, from UFC, uh, Ronda Rousey's group. Uh, uh, so right. And, 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 and we just had a, to see her in there as and well. And we actually just had a conversation with Britt Baker before this about her and, and other UFC people kind of getting into pro wrestling a bit. Yep. Uh, and, and, and a lot of, uh, a lot of male talents as well. Um, he's not pictured in the photo, but he's also featured a bit on the website article, uh, which I'm very uh, happy and, and, and excited to see was, uh, Eddie Kingston, uh, getting a tryout, uh, of Chikara pro fame. He's actually going to be at battle wars, 1999. Um, uh, very cool to see, uh, uh, him get a shot. And, and, and he's someone who I think is really you know, has been an indie mainstay for many years and, and, and deserves a shot. To, He's, uh, uh, if I can speak on him, so I discovered it because AIW posted the picture of him uh, with the NXT background and, yeah. and, and they just commented so many questions. And then a, a tweet <laughs> followed, uh, please buy our DVDs so that we can uh, compete in the bidding war for Eddie Kingston. Uh, yeah. So. There, so so take that for what it is, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's it, also there's also a tweet from somebody I don't remember. Uh, I think I retweeted it on my page, uh, and because I fully agree, uh, it's it's also very sad that Dusty's not around anymore and not at that performance center to hear Eddie Kingston cut a promo because I think that's very much needed oh, to happen. That sucks. That stinks. That stinks. I'm sorry. I'm distracted because one to WB.com just like goes on forever, and now they just have like like lady selfies like we don't have like diva swimsuit editions but we have lady selfie sections like right on their front page right. like that's okay i feel all right well, of course lana is is number one in that um but anyways uh i'm distracted now no eddie kingston eddie kingston now I, I, we said all our stuff about eddie kingston good for, yo, good for him and he's a guy that's been around for a good long time and i always con- i was always concerned that maybe like he was past his time for that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but, I, I, got, I got to talk to him a good bit uh, earlier in the year when he came up for Inspire Pro Wrestling, and he's an awesome guy, and I'm very excited that uh, he's getting that kind of an opportunity. And nothing against him, because he's still turning tremendous matches all over the place. But, uh, but again, when you think you know the WWE type, you, you, you really don't anymore, do you? Uh, when you look at just... Yeah, it's all, it's all really changed. All across the board there, so... Um, but uh, definitely, if his promo, you know, if they dig that, 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 that that's definitely... Awesome for him. Uh, so a lot of great stuff in the Performance Center there. Uh, a lot of great stuff at Inspire Pro. Um, and uh, man, you're getting out there. You know, you are a you are a a uh, a wrestling nostalgia gimmick table away from Joe Dombrowski at this point. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think that's a little far fetched. I'm just saying on paper, on paper. You know, I mean, just I'm just saying if you're trying to figure out what that next step is in the playbook, um, then you can go places like up here in Pittsburgh. And have money to get back. Absolutely. Anyone in Pittsburgh area, please book me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> book Eamon. Hashtag book aim in Pittsburgh. Uh, well, let's make that happen so you can come hang out with us again. Or, or or send me to Texas. If anybody wants to send me to Texas. Book Sorg. Book yeah, Sorg. Yeah, like book that. Sorg. I'll do whatever you want me to do at this point uh, is to get down to Texas. So uh, there you go. But I think the closest I get to you is Nebraska this year. So, uh, well, <laughs> which is 
is still a good distance away. <laughs> I I need to look at my I Phoenix maybe Phoenix no. Uh, uh, <laughs> somebody get me a map. Avon Payton. <laughs> Indie wrestling. Uh, I had RWA this past weekend, of course, fall free for all. Um, some great stuff there. Uh, we, uh, um, um, I, I, I do have to call out this one part. We had a six man tag uh, with uh, uh, our friends from IWC, of course, uh, Bronco McBride, Marshall Gambino, and uh, Super Hentai against Generation Dead, friends of this very show, and Sanjay Dutt. So uh, Generation Dutt came out. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, uh, actually Sanjay Dutt rocking one of the uh, one of the, one of Gory's vets vests. So uh, it came out to their music. So that that was really cool to see um, um, Sanjay get into that. And uh, and uh, um, also Sean Schultz. Do you know this Sean Schultz guy? I, I've heard the name before. Yeah, we, was, I we mentioned to see him wrestle. We met, I think we mentioned him last week when we were kind of previewing the show. And um, and, and these guys been around, I guess, uh, you know, he's been to impact, been the global, he, he's done some stuff. So relative on them going into this. Um, but, uh, but he turned in a really great match against Shane Andrews on that fall free for all show. Um, so uh, show's not ready as, as of this recording, uh, still, still have to go through the paces on that. They should be available on indie wrestling. Us, uh, probably next week, uh, at this point. So, uh, great stuff there. And uh, and a good show all around. I've been really been impressed with uh, what RWA has been doing, just for a fun show. You know, I you know it's 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 been uh, pretty good. And and seeing this different influx of talent, um, another local guy, uh, Peyton Graham, uh, just just joined and become the co uh, uh, tag team champion. So again, it's kind of an intermeshing of of local talent. Uh, that's 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 kind of. Uh, not rejuvenating, but you know, giving a new energy to the place, and and that's really awesome to see. So awesome. So there you go. Well, Eamon, add Eamon to please on the Twitter is Inspire Pro Wrestling. Yes, indeed. InspireProWrestling.com. Thank you so much to our many, many guests today. Justin Plummer. Yes, Justin Labar, even though you, you know, yelled at me. Um, but uh, yeah. for uh, letting us use the studio and everything today and being a part of that. Thanks, Britt Baker, for uh, uh, hanging out with us as well to talk about the UFC wrestlers and a little bit about that blood sports show up in AIW um, a couple uh, weeks ago. And uh, and uh, and thank you, thank you for hanging out with us on the show on the Facebook Live, wherever that might have been this week, because we were all over the place this week, man. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter Wrestling Mayhem Show, subscribe to us, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and all the other places. Video on Facebook and the um, YouTube channel for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Support the Patreon for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. If you dig the stuff, if you want to see it grow, we really appreciate it. We got about uh, four people uh, on there right now giving their hard work cash to these shows. And uh, and, and it, 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 it lets us know we're doing something great. And uh, and then we can uh, have a little cash to, to make it bigger. Uh, in the in the meantime, there a lot of great stuff coming up. SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, check out the list of events there. Awesome cast, wrestling mayhem show. If you're in local in the Pittsburgh area, great Instinct for No Mercy talent for, uh, uh, tournament we're doing next week. Not looking for group in Brookline in the south hills of Pittsburgh. Thank you so much. Support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.